But yeah, it, it was a good year. And I have to remain on that positive track to try to end it because it's very easy to succumb. As we were talking about grippy, grippy. <laughs> what grippy are you? song vacations? Yes. Ah, you Big remember Lotto's. Seattle. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah it was yeah. rough. Seattle, that, I feel like that was just like yesterday. Yeah. You know, um, working for Microsoft and then like how that pivoting from Seattle to Houston. Mm -hmm. What was that? Like, I guess at what point in your life did you feel like, okay, this was the time, like I needed to leave here. I felt like I was coming back in shame because mm. y'all threw me this like bomb ass party in 2015. Oh, so I don't like surprises. Mm -hmm. I don't like surprise parties. I don't like being around a lot of people unless they're my friends. And unfortunately, unfortunately, my friends, ugh, Wando left. They coordinated a surprise party at the twins' apartment off of Westheimer. And I was, when I say depressed in a funk, my sister was like, hey, the twins want to hang out. And I was like, for what? They're like, it's a pool party. <laughs> and I was like, whatever. At least I don't have to shower. I can just get in the pool. <laughs> no, that was dead ass my thoughts. So I get into the house and all my friends are like, surprise, Anna, we're waiting. We're so excited for you to go to Microsoft. And I just burst into tears. And my friends were sitting close. I didn't even use deodorant. And I kept saying that. And it was like, just taking pictures like this. <laughs> like this. I like, still, when you call, there's a picture of us when you were, you were like in tears. Yeah, I know. But, and I'm just cheesing. And I had braces at that, that time. <laughs> and that's when it, whenever the, you call, that picture pops up. And it's like my favorite picture. Because she really hates surprises. But we felt like, especially with her, she doesn't, you know, celebrate herself enough. So f moving forward in 2023, I feel like she celebrated herself way more. Mm -hmm. when you, whenever you see people like that you've known for years and they, and just the way, like, you know, their growth, you're like, why don't they like, why don't y'all throw a party for yourselves? Like you've done a lot. Oh, and I mean. It's hard though. Yeah. Mm. It's hard sometimes to celebrate yourself. Like, because I know for me, I've always felt like I got more to do and I'm, yes. I'm not done yet. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I don't want to celebrate right okay. now because I, I'm still thinking about the next thing or how mm -hmm. I'm supposed to better this. Yes, I, like, there was accomplishments and I feel good about them, but part of me feels like if I spend too much time just like, yeah, I'm great, I'm amazing, I'm going to miss the boat for my next opportunity I, or absolutely. something like that. Mm. And so, I mean, it's, it's an internal battle. I, I definitely, you know, go through that, but... I feel you. People do need to celebrate themselves more, but it's it's hard to do. It's yeah. really hard, you know. I'm, I'm you. You know what? You're right, Courtney. Because to be, to be honest with you, I just started learning how to properly celebrate myself. Mm -hmm. um, right. She's been celebrating since twenty uh, since 2011. <laughs> don't, no. 2010. Don't do that. Y'all don't be in the house no, with you me. Y'all don't. Y'all don't be sitting in the house you with me. You always have something to celebrate. <laughs> no, though. no. And it's beautiful. It's it's beautiful. So. But but you know what? I do. I do. I, honestly, why I celebrate is because. Really not for me, mm -hmm. so that others can do it for themselves. Yeah. If okay. that makes like, I ain't sense. Caught on. If, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, and and I'm honestly telling y'all that even though it may look like I always celebrate, a lot of the stuff that I do is really for people, not for the, not for uh, like, not necessarily for people to like accept me or anything like that, but so that people, so that you, you, you can learn how to celebrate yourselves. Because if to be honest with you, celebrating yourself is a whole sport. Mm -hmm. It is a whole sport, honestly. Like, I, I didn't think that, um, even this right here, like, mm -hmm. yes, it's a celebration. Um, and I told myself when I get home, I was like, yeah, you need to, like, even if it's a glass of wine or something, taking yourself out to eat tomorrow, it's a milestone. I feel like, the, I feel like when it comes to celebrations as well, especially as women, we have to wait till something big happens before we actually celebrate ourselves, which I think needs to change for next year. We need to be on some stuff where it'll be the littlest thing, mm -hmm. the littlest thing. Go get your nails done. Go get your eyebrows done. Like we always have to wait till like something, we, it hits a certain capacity. What if it doesn't get to that capacity that we're looking for in that season? Like, are we gonna continue to keep waiting? I don't know, like how to explain it, if that makes sense to you guys. No, it does, it does. Okay, but when you okay when you put it that way, then I kind of do see where 
Um, some women do celebrate themselves. At least now I can finally say, like, okay, I am a slightly bit a part of that. Uh, because any little any little thing can happen, and I, I, I'm going to buy something. <laughs> I'm going to buy something. I that deserve part. it. Treat yourself. You Treat, know what I mean? <laughs> Treat yourself. Treat yourself. No, seriously, but that, though. That's within my own that. world. Like, I'm treating myself, and I yeah. know it, it's taking me feel good, but I do feel like sometimes, like, especially with the world of social media sometimes, mm. I don't want to be that person that's just like, Look at me. Mm-hmm. I'm so successful. I got this job. I did this project. I did da 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 But do you think that because you have an audience, you don't feel the need to celebrate yourself? No, it might mm-hmm. just be like a little weird. Like some people aren't really just open to that type of since energy. when? Since when did we start putting a cap on our celebration because of the insecurities of others? Yeah, because that's what it sounds like. Yeah, With yeah. the internet. Because yeah. that sounds, that's what it sounds that's like. That's exactly what With it is. Because here's the thing. Every, people are always going to feel some type of way. Okay. No matter, no matter how you celebrate yourself, there's always going to be a problem. Because honestly, some people are in their homes and they are uncomfortable and they're not happy. And they can't truly um, decipher what's going on in their lives. So they feel like, you know what? And, and my grace and my mercy goes to them too because, you know, we've all been at a place where we're like, damn, like... Do I got next? Mm. Can you put me in a game, coach? Like, but I feel like we have to stop putting our putting a cap at our celebrations because other people have internal insecurities. Mm-hmm. Who are we celebrating for, us or them? That's all I'm saying. No. That's a question that needs answered. So I, I'm not gonna lie. Social media had. And I want to thank God that we were in school when we were in school hey. and we only had access to tweet, Twitter and, and very small amounts of Facebook and, and uh, Instagram. And Instagram mm-hmm. Because what I see my nieces and stuff going through, I'm like, why, why my niece got a 30-inch bus now too? For who? That part. So Ooh. this celebration that, that we're doing outwardly, like, I, it's for that. It, 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 for them, it's for the audience. For me... Like you said, I, one thing about me, I'm gonna treat myself. I'm gonna treat, treat myself. I so deserve it, but I don't have to post it or anything. I, yeah, that's you, the thing. You don't have to, but, but and I don't have to make a big party out of it either. Like sometimes, you don't. sometimes I want to, and then after sitting down and like kind of breaking everything up, I'm just like, it's not even that deep. Let me go do this for myself. But even if you post it, uh-huh. what does it? Does the desire of celebrating yourself change? No, it or? doesn't. It's just it's just no urge. Okay. I'm not gonna lie, but I can't on TV and I feel like she creeps out every a little bit more. We all more. have those remnants. Yeah, we yeah. have those remnants of those <laughs> African aunties in us. I don't want someone preying on my pictures and see, look at her. And she's doing this. And she thinks she's somebody. And she thinks she's cute. <laughs> yes. Yes. And, and, and and that might not even be the case. Because let's be clear, what you put out into uh what your thoughts become your reality. Mm-hmm. So why am I mm. thinking that that's what's happening? That, that might not even be the case. Let me just assume everybody's like, damn, Nana has such a fat ass. I wish I had a great person that is like fat ass. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> I'm done, y'all. Yeah. I mean, it's about... I feel you, though, because it's, it's a part of it is protecting your energy, too. It's like, you could be doing good things mm-hmm. and want to post that just mm-hmm. because that's just what I feel like posting today. Mm-hmm. But they may, there may still be those people mm-hmm. sending you the evil eye. I know me, I can feel it. Like, when my ear rings, somebody talking about me, you know, like... You can feel it. You be in the same room with the people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And and they will smile in your face. Yeah, hey, that's but scary. you can feel it's it's it is it's it's really nasty. I don't understand it, but like I understand where y'all are coming from. I just feel as though as long as your heart is also in the right place, like I'm I'm very big on like your heart. Like it's a heart posture thing for me. If I'm celebrating myself because I genuinely want to, I'm not really concerned with the outside. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But you always the inner race. Not always. 2008, no, I was minding my blessed business. Reese came into the comments, like, bah, 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 my name is Clarice. Blah, blah. And I'm like, who's this loud African girl? <laughs> <laughs> but no, you've always been authentically yourself in a way that, not that I envy, but that I admire. And I'm like, yes. wow, I wish I could just be who I am, regardless of who's in the room. Not even like, it's not that you don't read your audience. Mm-hmm. It's that you showed up authentically you, and take it or leave it. That's just who you I'm were. Very unapolo- unapologetic about it. Just yeah. Is it? I don't know. Maybe it's the African in me. I really don't. I don't know because 
I mean, I, I have this conversation with my cousin all the time. I just, I just be living my life. But I mean, I will tell y'all this, that was also uh, not always me mm -hmm. um, because I'm, I'm the oldest of three and um, the pressures of being the oldest child and then the first daughter. Mm. Oh, um, and then honestly, us growing up, you was the first cousin. Was okay. Yeah. <laughs> you had a lot. So I'm, I was the oldest, not just of my siblings, mm -hmm. of them. Mm -hmm. And then pretty much they, I counted all of them as my siblings because we all grew up together. Mm -hmm. And so the pressures of like, you know, being the best, being number one, um, making sure you you finish college, all, all these different things. Um, I took those roles not because somebody asked me to, but I felt like I had to. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, celebrate yourself, but are you doing it because you want to make these people proud or is it for Clarice? That's the, I had to discern the two. Mm -hmm. So I've not always been like that. And I honestly didn't learn how to be like that until um, I would say my, my 30s when I got, when I turned 30 and I was like, well, honestly, I think I started that like right after I graduated from college. I just unapologetically was like, and it started honestly with my parents. Anybody knows if you have um, immigrant parents, the pressures of like doing everything by their will, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. not God's will, their will. Their will. <laughs> so um, it is, it, it can be, it can be very, very gut wrenching. I've not always been like that. Believe it, I had to learn how to be like that. Mm -hmm. Well, you did it well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's called golden child syndrome. Well, that's what I, mm. my therapist calls it when she talks to me about mm -hmm. it. Because it sounds pretty familiar of something that I went through too. When you're the golden child, the one that's always expected to succeed. Yeah. Always the one who isn't really, doesn't have that room for failure. Yes. Um, and from from outside influences. And it it becomes internal within you because that's just how you grew up. You've always been the responsible one, the one that has all the answers, when people mm -hmm. lean on, the one that people call when they need something, when they call the when they need to vent, the strong one. Um, and you don't realize that your upbringing, your upbringing contributes to that and it grows into a place until you become an adult mm -hmm. and you get to the point where you are and you're like, you know what? I'm going to start living for me and stop living for everybody else, you know? What but, if I told you that I'm still... I still have to catch myself. Mm -hmm. Still, like, I have to sit and think about it. Like, okay, Clarice, um, like, was that for you or was that for them? Do, I have to, like, sit down and be like, okay, I need to discern the two. And then one, like, it, it's, still, it's still kind of a struggle. Yeah. It's still kind of a struggle because, again, like, first of all, I'm pivoting from my career. Mm -hmm. I, I, you, you, I started off as a corporate... I've been in the corporate world for like 10 years. Yeah. And then so pivoting from there and in, into a new space and the, the new space not necessarily being 100% accepted, also by the people that call you the golden child, um, it can be a bit, it can be a bit much. But then I have to also ask myself, are you pivoting for them? Mm -hmm. Or are you doing this for you? Yeah. You know? So again, sitting there talking to myself, asking myself these questions. And the great thing about it is that it helps me actually get through it is that I have a village. Mm -hmm. Outside of my home, I actually do have a village. I have a tribe that gives me, that sends me reminders. So I think that me having, like, I had to like remove those titles. Mm -hmm. Golden child, first daughter, first child. Because that's, that's a cultural thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. That's, they... Titles and seniority matter to them. That does not matter to my calling. They don't align and they, they don't match. So I have to remember, I have to tell myself.